it's it's history with this with with Congress, both parties. So, do you think you guys will have a speaker by the end of the week? I'm very hopeful for that. I vote for anybody that out of that room. If if we got if they got 217, they got to get two. We got to get out of that room with 217 though, because we're just wasting our time going to the floor without 217. All right, back to Washington now. Our next guest with the the now, I think it's trademark, the barn jacket there <laughs> yesterday, indoors, I will say, says that we should have a speaker by the end of the week, but he is hopeful that we'll have a speaker by the end of the day. All right, for more on this, let's welcome in Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett, who, oh, there it is. He's oh. got it with him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a car heart, all right? I know it's it. I, yes. I know I, it. I, I, <laughs> we I love spend it. a lot of time and I spend a lot of time in my barn though and in the doghouse for you know that, that's a different story <laughs> for reasons yes. <laughs> yes all right well congressman so eight now eight names remain um, on this race congressman Dan user dropped out uh, who do you think has the ability to get to 17 does anybody on this list have the ability to get to 217 yeah I think there's there's three or four of them that, that do um, it's going to boil down to a couple of things. I mean, it's just it's just pure politics. Can this person um, withstand the pressure? Can they raise the money that's needed to to fund all these campaigns? And um, and do they have a conservative fiscal agenda? And um, and fortunately, they all do. They can all um, they've all proven in the past that they can do all those things. And so you know, as I've stated many times, our bench is very deep. It's just getting to these people. We had to get through that first tier of folks, and now we're. We're moving into new new territory. Yes, yes. Um, take the barn jacket with you. Um, so super secret vote in about a half an hour, and then maybe this thing moves to the floor and you figure it out. My question, you were part of the eight that voted Kevin McCarthy out 20 days ago. Did you think it was going to last this long, and do you regret doing that 20 days ago? I had no idea how long. Of course, I'd hoped we would go to the floor right then. You know, I'd, I'd voted for Steve Scalise and Jim Jordan. Frankly, I voted for Kevin McCarthy 15 times on the floor. So, and and do I regret it? No, absolutely not. I've I've received, you know, some some rebuke from some folks saying that I've wrecked the system. I've wrecked this institution. Tell me what what institution is 33 trillion dollars in debt? It, has, it pays a trillion dollars a year in interest. We ran up a trillion dollars again in three months this year. Um, let me tell you, this, this thing has been broke a long time. All the eight of us did was expose what's really going on. And now you're seeing all these, all these folks that are running want to go in a different direction fiscally. So I think all we did was expose it. I think that in the long run, it's going to do this country a great deal of service because of uh, you know, our fiscal situation. People are worried about three days. Uh, being the government being shut down, I'm worried about the whole fiscal, uh, you know, our whole monetary system collapsing. Honestly, uh, we can't go on at this rate. People wonder why you're paying so much, at, you know, at, at the grocery store now. It's because Congress cannot get their their head in the game. All they want to do is spend and get reelected, and that's what they do. And that's and also, you know, we've got a situation. Uh, that you've got a few people that control a huge amount of money and they love, they love the continued resolutions in the omnibus because all they do is grease their lobbyist friends and grease their special interests and here we are, $33 trillion in debt. And those eight men understand that and they understand that we can't go back to that system. We might have to do it temporarily because of, of, of the calendar, but dadgummit, we got to get this fiscal ship in order. I think a lot of people agree with you that the spending is out of control. Sir, do you think we have a speaker by tomorrow? That's what I pray. Every morning, I, every middle of the night, I wake up and I say, Lord, if you can get us there, I'd really be appreciative because mm -hmm. I, I think ultimately that's where we got we to gotta be. And I would ask people to pray for our country. And I remember my dad one time when an election wasn't going our way and there he was, an old World War II Marine. He prayed at our house there in, in West Knoxville, he said, Lord, please don't let us lose our country. And that was his prayer. Mm -hmm. And I've always remembered that. And I say that quite often because I see it every day. If we do not get this fiscal ship in order, and the, and the weird thing about it is we're paying this trillion dollars a year interest to China. The people that absolutely want to wreck us. Um, they're just like an, they're just like a drug dealer on the corner, and we we need that fix, mm -hmm. and we got to we got to straighten this thing out. And I'm sorry I over talked y'all, little hype. Congressman, no, you, no, never, you're great. never, never. <laughs> it's great to see you again. Uh, we will be watching as this plays out today. Hopefully, we have a speaker by the end of the day today. Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett, big thanks. Appreciate Thank you, it. Sir.